If you often feel worried about somebody you love or disappointed or upset by their choices or like your emotions revolve around whether they're doing well or not, then you are in the right place. I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf and today you'll learn the three steps to practicing loving detachment and stop your codependency. Please subscribe to this channel, it would mean a lot to me and you know, give a like to the video and definitely share it with anyone you think it might help. So. There are three steps to understanding loving detachment and learning that I have come up with in my 35 years of doing work directly with people. And it's this, it's understanding your own motives, learning acceptance and creating clear boundaries. So uh, let's get to it. So step one, again, understanding your motives. You, you gotta know why you're being codependent in a moment. So I'm gonna share a little. I've got a 17 year old son who does not take school seriously and won't put in much effort. We have made many interventions, but he continues really to make some, what I think are horrible choices that are screwing up his future. Now, and being the bossy Jewish mother that I am, I can become really controlling, frustrated, angry with him. And as you might imagine, he doesn't like it. It, it ends up in less communication uh, more digging in on his side and, and really our relationship worsens and our relationship is important. It's the last thing he needs is not to get along. So I have to continually work on lovingly detaching from what he's doing. Now, it doesn't mean I don't still actively parent him. Of course I do, but it means I see where my own anxiety and fear for his future are driving my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions. I have to look at my motive, why? And you do too. And when I get in charge of that and get into compassion and the love that I have for him, it's a very different interaction. The other motive that might be driving your codependent bus, it's likely your own low self-esteem. I say with love, but it's true. Maybe you only feel good when you're feel, feeling you know, needed by other people or when they're validating you in some way. Every time you step in to take care of someone else's life or choice, you're really depriving them of the opportunity to accomplish something and feel good about it themselves. So you really don't wanna do this. It's, 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 not, it's not kind. Step two, don't just love, accept. So, you know, accepting what our loved ones do can be really, really hard, hence my share about my son, uh, and I, I recently spoke to a client, for example, who was upset because it, her adult daughter, who makes a lot of money, wouldn't help her, her son, the girl's brother. And my client was really upset and went on and on about what her daughter should do and how she raised her to be thoughtful and generous. And she went on about how her son had had some hard knocks that her daughter hadn't had and that she should, that her sister, this as a sister, she should be more compassionate. And I had to talk to her about getting out of the middle of this adult relationship between her children. <laughs> her daughter is allowed to do what she wants with her money. And she also needed to accept that her son needs to make his own way. He, it might be messy, but he's got to do it. Learning to accept how and who people are and not constantly push them to be who and how you want them to be is really at the center of loving detachment. So yeah, you might have a friend who's, and you can see them making a bad decision, staying you know, with a boyfriend or girlfriend, but it's their life and their decision. You can definitely voice as an opinion if they ask, but otherwise it's really about supporting your friend in ways you can and stepping back from what you can't. And I've talked a lot about unconditional love versus unconditional acceptance because people only feel truly loved if they feel truly accepted for who they are. I did a whole video on it that I'll link below. All right, step three is the biggie. All right, save the biggie for last. You have to learn what having loving boundaries really means. And this is the meat of it, right? Boundaries are all at the center of loving detachment. And I talk about boundaries on a continuum with thin sort of uh, enmeshed boundaries. You know, when people are kind of too close being on, the, on one end and thick, emotionally distant boundaries on the other. And so if, if you knew when your parents were having sex, that is a very thin boundary. I, that's, you know, as a kid, that's really not information for you or how much their mortgage was or something. Those are very thin boundaries. On the other end are very thick boundaries. You know, if you called your dad, sir, 
that's a thick boundary. Um, you can see, so there's uh, too much emotional closeness on one side and no emotional closeness on the other. And as you might imagine, loving detachment is really about knowing where you are on that continuum. It's not an exact place, it's not in the middle, but it is about coming more towards the middle. So if you are, if you do have really thick boundaries, I don't expect you to suddenly be the perfect loving detached, but I want you to lean in. <laughs> and if you're over here and your boundaries are a little too thin, you gotta lean that way. And that's really what you're doing. And it's always, it's not hard and fast. This is not tough love. This is flexible and dynamic and loving. And as conditions change, sometimes our boundaries change. Now, so really I want you to think that loving detachment means you have boundaries that are truly based in love and they're of yourself and other people. And what they really are, it's, it's really about being very present and really in the moment with your emotions and knowing really what's coming up for you. And that, that more or less was steps one and two I just gave you, right? So again, you gotta realize that these two ends of the spectrum are fear-based. These thin and mesh, too close boundaries are fear-based. They're really grounded in loss of self, low self-esteem, and it's big time codependency lives there, right? I'm all about you and my relationship to you. But those thick detached boundaries are also really fear-based because uh, on this side, you're withholding your love and your affection. You're literally, you're really abandoning the other person emotionally and sometimes physically. Uh, you know, maybe you think you can't control them, so you give up and become disengaged. But I really want you to realize that these are two sides, these are two sides of the same coin. And the problem is that this enmeshed too close side is often seen as nice and it's not. It's controlling, it's manipulative, you know, for all the motives and reasons we talked about earlier. And the disengagement abandonment side obviously isn't nice either. That's, that's not nice either. And I will tell you what I see a lot is that people who have very thin and mesh boundaries, the really nice people, when people, when who they love isn't acting the way they want, they often jump to the other side. They become very, they get, they get very thick boundaries. They abandon these people. They become disengaged when they don't do what they want them to do. Uh, they get angry, resentful, they switch sides. And again, they abandon you because you're not acting right. And th none of this is healthy and none of this is loving detachment. Because, and here is the key, if you hear nothing else, you stayed this far, keep listening. Loving detachment isn't based, it is not based on how I feel about you. It's about how I feel about me in relation to you. So in other words, the boundary I draw isn't based on how I feel in a moment. So if I'm angry at you, it doesn't change my boundary. I don't get meaner or something. If I'm pleased and happy with you, I don't change my boundary with you either. I don't suddenly loosen them and do anything you want. Boundaries are about me and my feelings in a moment where I am. They are not about you and how I feel about you. And I do have a whole podcast I did, my Relationships Made Easy podcast on boundaries. And there's a, actually I have a video right here on YouTube too about how to create uh, boundaries, not walls. So, and of course I'll link to them below. And you know, the bottom line is that the operative word in loving detachment is loving, not detachment. <laughs> You've got to focus on love of yourself first and foremost, and then those around you. And I do have a simple research backed, super effective tool to help you do this. If you're open to it, and it's, it's a loving kindness meditation. It's right here on YouTube. You don't have to put in your email or do anything. It's right here. I link to that below the video and I really hope you start practicing it. The research on it, on these uh, loving kindness is amazing. Uh, and that's it. I come out with new videos like this every week. So please again, make sure you subscribe. I want you to have happier, more emotionally close relationships. I want us to have this time together and make sure you leave a comment below if there's a topic you'd like covered on a future video. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.